Now coming to the portal vein. So the tributaries of portal vein, it's very interesting for us to see. There is the splenic vein, right? And there is the superior mesenteric vein. So this is the superior mesenteric vein and this is the splenic vein. Both these veins, both these veins, they unite behind the neck of pancreas to form what you call the portal vein. So here you are having the portal vein. This portal vein is about 8 centimeters long. It is about 8 centimeters long. It divides in the porta hepatis of the liver into a right branch and a left branch. This is the right branch of the portal vein and this is the left branch of the portal vein which finally opens up into the sinusoids of the liver. Now into this portal vein here if you observe there is another vein that is opening here the splenic vein. Into the splenic vein you have got the inferior mesenteric vein. Inferior mesenteric vein is present which is opening into the splenic vein. Here if you see into the trunk of the portal vein there is opening of superior pancreatico duodenal vein. Superior pancreatico duodenal vein. So superior pancreatico duodenal vein is opening into the main trunk of the portal vein. Also we have got here the left gastric vein. Now this is the left gastric vein which is opening into the portal vein. Into this left gastric vein we have the esophageal veins opening up. So these are the esophageal veins which are opening into the left gastric veins. And we have got the right gastric vein which is short up that is opening into the portal vein. So here this is the right gastric vein which is also opening into the portal vein. Please observe, into the right gastric vein there is one special vein that is opening and this is the prepyloric vein. The prepyloric vein is opening into the right gastric vein. And into the left gastric vein, we have the esophageal veins that are opening up. Now coming to the left branch of the portal vein, you have the opening of the paraumbilical veins. So the paraumbilical veins are opening into the left branch of the portal vein. Into the right branch of portal vein here, into the right branch of portal vein, we have the cystic vein which is opening into the right branch of the portal vein. Are you able to understand? So this is how we have got the tributaries of portal vein. So you can understand. Now what are all the areas which the portal vein is draining? So it is draining the spleen via the splenic vein. It is draining the pancreas, you know, via the superior pancreatic duodenal vein. It is draining the lower part of the alimentary tract, that is the small intestine. The blood which is absorbed from the small intestine, that is, I mean, the nutrients, I'm sorry, the nutrients that are absorbed from the small intestine, the carbohydrates, proteins, fats and all, whatever it is. So these are transported from the different parts of that you know intestine they are going into the liver they are transported into the liver via the portal vein please observe here it is interesting for us to know there is something called streamline streamline flow now what do you mean by this streamline flow the streamline flow is stating that the blood which is flowing from the superior mesenteric into the right 
lobe of the liver and that which is floating from the spleen will go into the left lobe of the liver. There is no mixing of the blood. We said the, the visitary vein and spleen vein are the formative tributaries. Because of the union of these two large veins behind the neck of pancreas, we are having the portal vein that is being formed. Large veins means compared to these tributaries, these are larger only. The splenic and the superior mesentery. But there is no mixing of the blood. They are going this stream of superior mesentery vein flows via the portal vein, goes into the right lobe of the liver and the blood which is coming from the splenic vein, it enters the portal vein and goes into the left lobe of the liver. So this is what to call streamlined flow of the blood. So now you can understand these are the formative tributaries that is the superior mesentery vein and the splenic vein which are draining the spleen that is the splenic vein is draining the spleen and the superior mesentery vein is draining the lower part of the gut. Also we have got here the inferior mesentery vein which is important tributary of the splenic vein. So splenic vein is not only draining the blood from the spleen Splenic vein is not only draining the blood from the spleen but also it is having the blood coming from the inferior mesenteric vein that is again from the intestine. So here you have got the superior mesenteric vein. So these two veins which are the formative tributaries unite with each other behind the neck of pancreas to form the pyloric vein. These two unite to form behind the neck of pancreas to form the portal vein. The portal vein is ascending upwards turns to the right okay with a right inclination the portal vein is seen with a right inclination and divides into right and left branch in the porta hepatis of the liver seen on the inferior surface of the liver there is porta hepatis in the porta hepatis the portal vein divides into right shorter branch and a left longer branch if you see the flow of blood the blood which is flowing in the superior mesenteric vein enters the portal vein enters the right branch of the portal vein finally goes into the right lobe of the liver the blood which is coming from the splenic vein and the inferior mesenteric vein they are also entering the portal vein they travel towards the left branch of the portal vein and open or they are entering the left lobe of the liver so these two flows are separate Though they enter the portal vein, there is no intermixing of the blood. This is what we call as the streamlined flow. If you observe the left gastric vein, it is having the tributaries, they are nothing but the esophageal veins. And if you see the right gastric vein, it has got pre-pyloric vein in this, as the tributary. And here if you see the left branch, you are having para-umbilical veins from the umbilicus. And if you see the cystic vein that is coming from the gallbladder to open into the right branch of the portal vein. Here opening into the main trunk of the portal vein we have got the superior pancreatic duodenal. The transpyloric plane is also called as Edison's plane or it is also called transpyloric plane of Edison. Okay. So Edison. So please understand when we are trying to divide the anterior abdominal wall into nine quadrants we draw two vertical lines okay these vertical lines are almost you know they are considered to be the mid clavicular lines and we draw two horizontal lines so these two horizontal lines one is above and one is below the one which is drawn above is called the transpyloric plane if you see here, we are trying to draw the ziphoid, the ziphoid process and here we have got the costal margin, this is the abdomen, here we have got the anterior superior iliac spine, here we have got the pubic symphysis, yes, so here we are trying to draw the inguinal ligament, okay, just a rough sketch for you to have the idea. Now you know in the center we have got the umbilicus or the nevus. Now we are trying to draw lines, okay, which are like this horizontal, two horizontal lines and two vertical lines. Finally, what is that we are getting? We are getting nine quadrants. One, two, three, 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Is that a rough diagram for you to understand? So this horizontal line is called the trans pyloric plane. So this is what we are trying to show as the trans pyloric plane. Are you able to follow? Now this horizontal line for you to draw on the body. Now imagine I want to draw trans pyloric plane on my body. How will I draw? First, I will feel the suprasternal notch and reach the pubic symphysis. So here is the suprasternal notch. Now you know between the two pubic bones, you have got a pubic symphysis. So I will take the midpoint starting from the suprasternal notch to the pubic symphysis. I will take the midpoint. That is one way of ending. I will draw one horizontal line. Okay. Then second way of drawing it is there is you know this is now the the body of the sternum okay we will draw the body of the sternum that is the body and here is the manubrium so this is called the manubrio sternal joint okay which one this is called the manubrio sternal joint and this is called ziphi sternal joint between the ziphi process and the manubrium so this is the ziphi sternal joint so from the ziphi sternal joint, one hand breadth in my body, on my body, if I'm trying to draw the transpyloric plane, so I will keep, you know, from the ziphi sternal joint, one hand breadth below it. One hand breadth below it, you get the horizontal plane and that is the transpyloric plane or the Edison's plane. That's how we can draw the Edison's plane on our body. Now what is the importance of this? Edison's plane. Why we are talking so much about this Edison's plane? Because this cuts or this line passes through the, this imaginary line passes through the pylorus of the stomach. Imagine if you say this is the trans pyloric plane, what are all the events that are happening? So here you get the pylorus of the stomach. So it is passing through the pylorus of the stomach. Okay, so it is also called the transpyloric plane. Second, what is happening is, if you take the gallbladder, that is the liver we are trying to draw, the fundus of the gallbladder is touching this transpyloric plane. Fundus of the gallbladder is touching or passing through this. I mean, the transpyloric plane is passing through this fundus of the gallbladder. Now look at the board. The transpyloric plane is passing through the hilum of both kidneys. How? We will see. You know, right kidney is at a lower level, right? And the left kidney is at a higher level. Okay? Now this is the right kidney and this is the left kidney. Please observe, the right kidney is having the right kidney is having I mean, the transpyloric plane is seen passing through the upper part of the hilum of the right kidney and lower part of the hilum of the left kidney. Now, you know this hilum, this is the groove. This is called hilum. So, upper part of the hilum, through the upper part of the hilum, this transpyloric plane is passing and through the lower part of the hilum, through the lower part of the hilum of the left kidney, the transpyloric plane is passing. Also, the termination of spinal cord, that is the lower portion or the termination of spinal cord is what you are having here, okay? And then we have the origin of, that is termination of the spinal cord. And then we have got the origin of superior mesenteric artery. So here we are having the artery called superior mesenteric artery, okay? the superior mesenteric artery. And also we have got this transpyloric plane, it passes through posteriorly the lower border of L1 vertebra. Now you know we are talking about the vertebra. Here we will draw the vertebra. Here is the vertebral part of, you know, here. So here is the transverse process. So at the lower border of L1 vertebra, 
at the lower quadrant of L1 vertebra, we have this lower quadrant of L1 vertebra is uh, that is the transpyloric plane is passing through it. And anteriorly, if you see, it, pass, it passes through the tips of nine costal cartilage. Anteriorly, it is passing through the tips of the nine costal cartilage. Thank you.